In this video, let's go over limits with powers and roots. So I have two theorems written out here already, and what those two theorems are saying is basically the same thing, just one's with a power and one's with a root. But it would make sense that if it works one way with the power, it would work the same way with the root, because roots and powers are really the same thing, just written in a slightly different way. And depending on what our application is and what we're doing, it's sometimes more useful to think of it in one way versus another. So, also, limits with powers and roots work the same way they do with everything else that we've had them in. And let's go over a little example to show that. So, example. Let's say we have this, or not the square root, let's go with the cube root of 8. Well, that equals 2. But the cubed root of 8.001 is equal to 2.000083. Now it makes sense that because these 8's are close to the same number, so are the answers. And that's the point of the powers and roots being the same thing. Because the bigger we make this 8, the bigger that this answer would be. The smaller we make it, the smaller our answer would be and we can get as big or small as we want on either one, so the ratios are related there. Well, I guess I probably shouldn't call it a ratio because it's not a set, set thing, but... Anyways, let's go over some examples of limits with powers and roots. For the uh, next example, we'll say limit as x approaches 3 of square root of 25 minus x squared. This limit is done just by plugging 3 in, and as long as we don't have any problems with zeros, we will just work it out that way. So this is the limit as x approaches 3 is the square root of 25 minus 9, because 3 squared equals 9, which is the limit as x approaches 3 of the original stuff equals square root of, let's see, 25 minus 9 is 16, which equals 4. So the limit as x approaches 3, square root of 25 minus x squared equals 4. We have a few more examples to go over. So for the next one, we'll show that this also works with one-sided limits. So let's say we have the limit as x approaches 5 from the left. And it'll be the square root of 25 minus x squared. Well, this is equal... Ah, that didn't work out too well. This is going to be equal to the square root of 25 minus 25... or er, minus 5 squared. So 5 squared, which is equal to square root of 25 minus 25, which is equal to the square root of 0, which equals 0. Uh, besides having one-sided limits, sometimes we will uh, have to rationalize the denominator to make this work. So here's an example of rationalizing the denominator. We'll say we have the limit as x approaches 0 of x divided by square root of 9 plus x minus 3. Now if you notice, if we plug in 0 here, we get a 0 in the denominator and a 0 in the numerator, so it would be 0 over 0, which algebraically that's not useful for us. So what we do is we rationalize the denominator. And we do that by multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator on both sides. And conjugates are a little odd to see the actual math definition of, but I think you'll get a pretty good idea of what it is from this example if you aren't already familiar with them. So we have the first part that we started out with, and then we're going to multiply it by 1 
but the way that we're going to write one is the square root of 9 plus x plus 3 divided by that exact same thing so we're only multiplying by 1 but because of the way we wrote it we're going to get something a little bit more useful so that's the limit as x approaches 0 of x times the square root of 9 plus x plus 3 on the numerator and the denominator we will get 9 plus x plus 9 or I'm sorry minus 9 on the outside of that it's 9 plus x minus 9 simplifying that a little bit more we have 9 minus 9 so we can simplify that and we can just give it x on the bottom so that's going to be the limit as x approaches 0 of x times the square root of 9 plus x plus 3 divided by we just have a x down there which that equals the limit as x approaches 0 we can cross these x's out so it's the limit as x approaches 0 as the square root of 9 plus x plus 3 and that's over 1 we could have multiplied that by 1 so we don't have a 0 on the bottom which plugging 0 in here we get square root of 9 plus 3 which equals 3 plus 3 which equals 6 so the limit as x approaches 0 of x divided by square root of 9 plus x minus 3 equals 6 besides rationalizing the denominator sometimes we'll want to rationalize the numerator so let's go over one example of that so example let's say we have the limit as x approaches 25 and the square root of x minus 5 divided by x minus 25 well if we plug in 25 we're obviously going to get 0 divided by 0 so we need to do some algebraic acrobatics and get this to something a little bit different so it'll be the limit as x approaches 25 and we'll start out with the same thing square root of x minus 5 divided by x minus 25 but we're going to multiply by 1 because anything multiplied by 1 is the same thing but we're going to write it as the conjugate of the numerator so it'll be times the square root of x plus 5 divided by square root of x plus 5 and then we just FOIL this so the square root of x times square root of x is just x then we'll have plus 5 square root of x minus 5 square root of x so that equals out to 0 and then negative 5 times 5 is 25 oh forgot this is the limit as x approaches 25 so x minus 25 in the numerator and in the denominator we'll get x times the square root of x okay I forgot where I was in this video I've had it paused for a few minutes I uh, thought the example was coming out differently I I was working out differently than I had meant to so up to this point everything is still good we have x minus 25 in the numerator that's what it should be um, I was going to do something else just a moment ago but that something else wasn't gonna work out and that's what was that's what made me pause the video anyways on the bottom we're just gonna stick with x minus 25 and square root of x plus 5 and we aren't gonna multiply any of that out that doesn't suit our purposes 
and that's what I was about to do, but something didn't work out. I would have got zero in the denominator if I did multiply that out. But now we have a x minus 25 in the numerator and in the denominator, so that can be crossed out. And then we get the limit as x approaches 25 of 1 over the square root of x plus 5 which I'll just plug in 25 there so get 1 over the square root of 25 plus 5 which is 1 over 10 so the limit as x approaches 25 of the square root of x minus 5 divided by x minus 25 equals one-tenth.